Okay, so you are being recorded. Uh, attending from the Planning and Zoning Commission, I see Alvin Hill, Brian Santos, Jane Salsi, John B. Lenke, Kais Orlevac, and Ray Williams. Staff are Recording Secretary Gloria Harvey, Zoning Enforcement Officer Cindy Dunn, and myself, Tira Pangesic, Director of Planning and Development. So let me pull up the screen share so we can pick up where we left off. <sighs> Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. You as well. <clears throat> okay, so um, we left off right here, Article 4, Section 3, Subdivision Map Requirements. Uh, I took a look at it this morning. I don't actually think that there's a lot of comments on this section that um, Marla had sent me, but I know that she and Cindy did talk about some stuff here, so I'm mostly going to turn this over to Cindy. Uh, this is followed by section four, which starts to get into the stormwater management and um, low impact development design and that we do need to have Marla's updated comments on. Uh, so it might be a short meeting um, so that we don't waste the time together. Uh, if we're running really short, I would suggest we can go back, excuse me and um, look at anything that anybody wants to revisit that we've gone over up to this point, but I'll leave that to you guys. Um, so Cindy, uh, I'm gonna do a quick zip through to see if we do have any comments, but then um, you tell me where you wanna go. Um, this first one here from Marla is just a simple language edit. So I think we can, as we have been, zoom past that. I don't actually think there was anything really substantive. Um, go, go slower, go slower, go back up. Um, okay, I was Karen. just gonna zip and see if there was anything before okay. we went back to the top, but go oh. on, we can, we can start from the top, that's fine. Okay. Tell me where you want me to go. Um, down, down to the cover sheet. Um, there's somewhere in here, there's an explanation of what's on the cover sheet. Oh yeah, okay, the B. Yep. So subdivision names, right? Name subdivision resemble any sub. Okay, location map. That's correct. Um, proposed lot lines. I, I believe that that. I wish I had brought a home a subdivision page with me. I had like three of them in my hand today that I filed away. But um, a location map. Okay, proposed lot lines. I think that's like the silhouette, the round silhouette that's on the front of the page. So, so I'm good with that. Okay. But the soil types, um, I believe that they, the, the engineers put that on the, like the last page with all the printed explanation of soil erosion and control and the soil types, et cetera. I believe that's on, you know, in the back after it all, all is, but we would have to check that out. Um, and then, then they do give me a soil map for the parcel. It's not on the survey, but it's a separate paper, but that's okay to be on the cover sheet too. Um, so the soil type should or should not be on the cover sheet? I don't think that should be on the cover sheet. So we have to check that out. Okay. I believe that, that that's in the back okay. of the, the plans after all the um, lots description, et cetera. Um, it is a lengthy document. I'm very familiar with these documents. So yeah. I, I, would, I would not imagine that would be in the front. Right, right. Okay. I, I think that all of these suggestions were provided to us by Janet. It doesn't mean that there isn't room for for editing. I think she condensed them from the existing subdivision regulations, which were kind of all over the place. Um, but you know, it should be what it needs to be, right? We don't need to overcomplicate right the document either. So I've got that note. Uh, okay, keep going. So all the inland and wetlands, and Brian, you can probably help with this too. Isn't isn't that on the um, topography pages, or ours, Brian? 
I don't think that that's on the. Sorry, I was right. muted. Yes, they those are topography pages. Yes. Right. Okay. Um. And the existing buildings are usually on. I'm thinking of um, Donovan. He had uh, the existing houses as you went up to Donovan, and and, and again, that's on the, like the second page of, of it. So we would have to check that out too. Location of existing buildings on or within 200 feet of the subdivision. Name and owner of records good, applicant, designer, street intersection and driveways. Again, I believe that that's on this number 11. That is not on the cover sheet either. Okay. Can, signature can you, block is just, is just so I understand not. what's actually next. I'm so sorry, Cindy. Can, can we just go to the next section? What is the next section titled as? Record subdivision map. Right. And that's that's where I think that, that should go is on the you know subdivision map. Record all, subdivision. All of these items. Um well no, the um which which one did we say that belonged on the topography? The inland wetlands Thanks. belongs on the topography. So inland wetlands belongs on the record subdivision map. It belongs on the top topography map. Right, Brian. Well, the thing for me is I, I'm 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 racking my brain on this. This is a cover sheet. Like there's, yeah. there's like right a few steps here. There's a cover sheet, and then after the cover sheet, there's like let's call it a body of of information, right? Uh, which would include topography maps, location, like exact location of the building, you know, other data. Uh, I, I'm just I'm so confused on how we how are we putting all of this data onto a cover sheet. Right, it right. This doesn't seem like it would be very clear. Right? right, exactly, exactly. But I think the topography map is also separate from um, the actual layout of the lots. I don't know if I'm confusing the matters because that's what why was I was that? asking, that's why I was asking you to go to the next section because yeah. I feel like like number six, number five. Well, let's go back up actually for a second because it tells no. you what the what the three things are we're talking about here: a cover sheet, a record subdivision plan, and a subdivision site development plan. Those are the three required maps. All right. So, so what we're talking about should go on the record subdivision plan or. So well, no. Like, I yeah. feel like that's in reverse order, right? Like, go. I'm so sorry. Go scroll back up. No, yeah, that's go what back we're here up for. again. That's right. What we're here and, for. and Cindy, I'm not. I'm not trying to change because obviously this is all from the previous subdivision regulation, right? So, no, I'm just go back to those three steps there. Yeah, it's just it's jumping it's around. A, that's all. In my mind, it's a cover sheet, and then you have a subdivision site development plan that has right. topography pages, all this other stuff. And that gets submitted. And then when it's all approved, you submit a record plan, right? Like, I, I feel like B is, should be C. But I, I mean, I, I'm having a hard time. This is all words on a piece of paper. I would like to see an actual submission uh, that somebody submitted. Right. And, and see all the steps that were previously done for me to really understand. Yeah, and I had it in my hand today and I didn't bring it home. Um, but I would I think that that it should be opposite. It should be the subdivision plan should be P B and then the record subdivision plan should be C, which would include all the printed information, would include the um, topography map. Well, topography map first, then the printed information that they put on there, the um, the soils, the erosion, sediment control, um, the drainage. And then after that, they have like diagrams. So that should be the record subdivision plan. 
because the record would be the requirements. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to just kind of asterisk. I don't want to confuse anybody here. I would I just want to see what the plans were before. Right. And then we can talk about how to dictate it in some verbal communication here, written verbal communication. Right. Uh, sorry. Well, there's nothing to be sorry for. That's that is what we're here to figure out is does right. this does this document, the subdivision regulations make logical sense in what we're asking people to provide? Are we describing what our needs are and what the expectations are? Yeah. And, you know, it's certainly possible, and I would posit it's even likely um, that whatever the subdivision regulations have said all these years, we've been accepting it in whatever form is actually logical. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, right. this document should match what that actually is so yeah, that we're right. not des describing things that people are going, what, what is this? Right. Because right, you that, cover pages for me, and I, I think everyone on the line would agree it only has like basic information on it like the address a nice photo of you know, to give you a visual of what the property looks like you know and then maybe you know the owner of the applicant the designer all this other stuff but the meat and potatoes is would be in that b which i the new b uh right with all the you know development plans and topography plans and stuff like that and then once all that gets approved then you submit the record doc documents and be done with it okay so right. we're not saying the right we're saying this stuff should be on the i gotta scroll up again <laughs> this stuff should be on the subdivision site development plan i just want right. to get yeah oops. right oh i hate this thing right what? i still have to get you your mouse i know i know Every time, because when do I more? think about how much I need a mouse? When we're doing this and at no other time. Are you around tomorrow? <laughs> I am. I still have. I'm still looking at it, this mouse. <laughs> I would gladly accept your extra mouse. Subdivision site right. development plan. That's yeah. what we want this to be. Can I can I just make a suggestion here? I, I don't want to yes. I don't want to like go through this and make all these notes and say put this under sub development plan where if we actually looked at a actual submission and it made sense, I, we can make a more educated decision about what we're doing here, right? I just don't want to. But I don't think you can do that on on a Zoom. I think you have to do that with the maps out there in front of you. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I agree. I feel like one of these meetings we should get together and review these maps. You know, for right. the map, you know, for the map stuff that might make sense. The problem is, and the reason that we've done these on Zoom is because for me to do the edits, um, it's actually I, I have much better focus doing this sort of with no external distractions, right? Yep. I'm just I'm talking to you guys and I'm typing as we go. Yep. Uh, that becomes so, actually a lot more complicated and problematic when we're live and we're going from page to page. What is possible and it's and let's see what else we have for comments. Yep. Um, well, so let, let's but but I think we can agree what goes on the front cover page. Yep. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's start with number one. OK. Number one. All right. Okay. Going back, going back to number going one. back. And I'm just going to drop a note in each number that says yes or no. Yeah, that's covered. Yes. Yes. Number one's yes. Cover page. Yes. Number two's yes. Number three. Number three, I believe that that's that round circle on, on the, the front of the cover page. I believe it and is. And it's like a silhouette of all the, 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 um, yeah. the, the lots. Yeah, okay. that's a, I'm, I'm going to be funny here and say that's a definite maybe. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me. Number four, no. All right, I'm going to make this just a simpler comment. I'm just going to have yes or no. So let me back, backspace this out. Yeah, that, okay. that runs in the subdivision development plans. Yeah. Number five, no. Um, 
it's just it's a requirement, but it's a separate paper that they sent give us. So I don't know how you want to handle that. Yeah, because like number four, the soil types is not a plan. It's it's actually a report of eight and a half by eleven. That's right, what and that, that is. And they go put that in the back. That's correct. It usually falls into some sort of specification. Right, right, right. right. That's the word. Yes. Okay. And the wetlands water course, no, goes on to topography. Okay. So this is location of existing. Building no. seven, no. It's a no, it belongs on the site development plan. Yeah, it's a no. Yeah, okay. Number eight, yes. Yep. Number nine, yes. Ten, yes. Street intersection driveway and boat. Um, no, that goes on the the. It's like development plan. Yeah, that's development a no. plans. Development is a no. We're running out of room there. All right. Well, so, it, it makes its own room later. Um, uh, no. Street intersections and drive. Uh, uh, that's okay. number eleven. Yep. Number yep. twelve. Yep. Yes, but you also have to. I don't know if you want to put when needed, inland wetlands block. I, but you need an inland wetlands block for number 13. Now, the other thing that they put on there, and that's why I wish I had the damn map in front of me, um, they put it on uh, an in index of pages, what's, what, what the following pages are. Yeah. Index or table of contents for sure. So, so I'm going to scroll back up then and just put that at the front of the section because usually you would have a TOC at the beginning of a document. And then while you're at it, I know it comes later on in this as I was reading it, but you also should, should have the zoning district. Uh, hold on. Nothing more aggravating than looking at a site plan and not having the zoning district on it. I'm pretty sure that says that in the it very next. It says that further thing, on down, it? but not on the cover sheet. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, so let's go back and add that. Uh, and da, da, da. and zoning district info. Okay. Okie dokie. <clears throat> uh, approval block. Oh, I thought I was supposed to look up the um, shoot. What are you looking up? Number 14. Um, the five years. Uh, I have a funny suspicion that that's changed. Did anybody mention it? You went over this before when I wasn't at, at a meeting. Well, we went through it in the first pass through. Right. Um, I don't remember in particular the topic of what the five year valid period. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Uh, uh, we've, got to, we've got to look that up. Look that up. So just make a note to check the uh, state statutes on it, and I don't have my I don't have my statute book he, he, here either that Alvin so politely did for us, kindly did for us. But Alvin's on; <laughs> he might be looking it up. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it still says uh, shall complete all work in connection with a such subdivision within five years after the approval of the plan for such subdivision. Okay. Go, goes on and on and on. Well, so that's, that block does have 
a line for date of expiration. It does, but you can, uh, but, but there's, but you can, they can come and reapply to have, oh, excuse me, they can come to have it extended. So I don't know if we need to mention that or not. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, there says here that there is an allow for any extension there, thereof. Yeah, there, they are allowed extensions. Right. So what you would add, you would add a line for extension date, which wouldn't be filled in at the first period, but would be filled in as it was extended. Is that what you're suggesting? Um, hmm. I, I, don't, I don't even know if we want to open that door in, in here because you know, I mean, they, they, they know. Yeah, they I, think, I think just noting the 826G of the general statute, you can do right. it just like I just did and just read it, right? So I think you can just, yeah. I mean, the statute is the statute, so. Because technically the office is supposed to um, inform the, the, the expiration date, you know, before the expiration date of the subdivisions. I believe because there were so many, you know, in my, my research in this past week on different things, there was a lot of subdivisions, um, you know, in, in the 80s and 90s, but not so much now. Meaning no subdivisions that occurred or subdivisions that were filed and then expired? Well, there are subdivisions that occurred. And I think when Mary Ann was, was in, in the office that she kept pretty good tabs on when they expired. Because I know I had to tell a couple that the, their subdivision are expired. And, um, and actually the Planning and Zoning Commission actually had to say it was no voted, that it was no longer voted that it expired. So it was no longer a subdivision. But we haven't done that for two, three years, three years at least. I and mean, is your, a, is your suspicion a, that there are subdivisions that need to be formally expired out there or that there just aren't any that have been followed up on? It's just not followed up on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Actually, um, I think it, it should be uh, 826C, not G. G is for developments of 400 or more. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that you have that book in front of you. All right. Uh, but the approval block is a yes to be there. It's just, is that what, is that the case? Yes, it um, must yeah. be. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah, because we're just going through yes and no on each of these items. So we want to be sure that we hit them all. Oh, and this is what you were saying here. This right. is right. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I think it's C, not G. Yeah. So this is a yes as well. I got you. Kira, one more thing on uh, number fourteen. Yep. Uh, it's more converse, conversational. That sentence. I would prefer if all physical improvements required by the submitted plan are not completed by the expiration date. Not this plan or that date is too conversational. So let me read it through again. Per section 8-26C of the Connecticut General Statutes as amended, approval automatically expires five years from date of approval if all physical improvements required by this plan are not completed by the expiration date. I would say submitted plan. By this submitted plan. Are not completed by the expiration date. Okay, I hear what you're saying, Alvin, yep. All right, so let's just read it again so we make sure that it makes sense to our ears, not just our eyes. Per section 8-26C of the Connecticut General Statutes as amended, approval automatically expires five years from date of approval if all physical improvements required by this submitted plan are not completed by the expiration date. Does that make sense to your ears and your eyes? Yes. For right now it does, yes. I have some and I have to say that's more in line with the actual written law here, because it says here, A, 
any person, firm, or corporation making any subdivision of land except as provided in section 826G, which is the greater one, shall complete all work in connection with the such subdivision within five years after the approval of the plan for such subdivision. The commission's endorsement of approval on the plan shall state the date on which such five year period expires. So I think what Alvin wrote is more appropriate. Okay. Okay, Works so right. so I have a question, Alvin. Um, so do you just, does, does that statute just mean that if they were gonna put roads and driveways in, that that has to be completed, but not the actual houses. Is Ooh. that what that means? Not number 14. So, so number 14, so what, you're, what number 14 is saying, if you come to us with a four lot subdivision within five years, all those four lots have to be developed and occupied? Well, I think in 88-26C, yes, Cindy, what you just said is correct. They would have to come down to us again and ask for an extension. Extension. But that would only apply if they actually showed the houses, right? If they're just doing, if they're just proposing the subdivision and breaking it into the lots with the, right. the public improvements and they haven't shown any houses, then that's what they've shown on the plan. That's, you could, that's you, true you as could, well. You could sell build to suit. Yeah, because right. the, the, wor the words, the verbiage in the statute here says, shall complete all work in connection with such subdivision within five years. So they don't clarify what all work means. Okay. All right, I'm wrapping my head around this. But they do say stuff about extensions, right? So right. later on, right? You'd have to right. come down and review it again. But I think Tira is right too. If they don't show houses on the subdivision plan, but just kind of give a general layout, then that's not part of the work. Right. Correct. Correct. That's why we canceled out the subdivision, which is now Northeast Sand and Gravel, because originally that was going to be a subdivision, but they never developed it to split those lots. And so we canceled that sub. You, you, the well, they just, ne they never even got to this point. Right? Well, no, it wasn't, it was the owner before the present owner. Oh, I see, I got you. I think you were on the commission at that time okay. when we canceled it, you know, we said, you know, this is, this is defunct because they, it's expired, the subdivision, um, development has expired. That's where I was getting confused. Because gotcha. if you have a 20 lot subdivision, you're really going to get it all done in five years? Yeah, and the answer is no, absolutely not. Well, yeah. the, further language, gonna... the further language does clarify that, especially number 15. Okay. Okay. All right. So 15 is also a yes. Yes. Well, yes. wait a minute. Somebody are part of this plan. Approval of this plan is contingent on completion. Crime is on regulation, except any waivers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that seems logical. And there's your, oh, yeah. your, yeah, there's there's your zoning zone. classification. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a yes. And I'll just, I'll amend that. I'll know when I see that note tomorrow that okay. it's redundant. Okay, so now, and I think we might start to see some comments here from Marla, although they may be mostly linguistic again, but we'll see. Okay, the re second, the subdivision map shall include the, f all right, so. And this is what you talked to Marla about the other day, right? Um, record subdivision maps, all of it's neat and legible, data preparation, revisions, um, streets and other maps should contain the names of the qualified soil sites. Yeah, well, we know that. Um, recommended deleting the words repaired 
No, no, I don't think we talked about this part. Okay, because you had said stuff about the mylars, and we're, we're talking about the record subdivision map. We're now talking about the mylar. So first of all, this is out of order, right? This should be, this should come after. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, this is after the, the next section. Right. Oh, basically what we talked about is that we want to include all the pages of the, the subdivision from the cover sheet all the way down that should be recorded. That's what we covered, the, talked about the other day. And we went down to see what has been recorded in the, you know, to, to make sure, verify what was recorded in the past. Okay, so clarify to me how that is different than what is said here. Because <laughs> you have, I mean, this is your this is your filing. So you've got a cover sheet, you've got this the subdivision plan, and then you've got the record subdivision map, which is the mylar. Are, those things are already always included, are they? Where, not? Did, where did we where where did we cover the um, go back up? please, if you don't mind. I do not mind. So what we've done is we've gone from cover sheet to mylar, but we've already <laughs> agreed that those are out of order. Right. right. How do you so do we, that? Right. Do so we, yeah, we, know so. That we, need to, we know that we need to flip the order, but since right. this is the order that it's written in, let's just look at the mylar requirements and make sure okay. that they are correct. All right, I hear what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Do Okay, yeah, she's right about the having the qualified so soil scientist's name. Um, can, can I ask a really dumb question, Cindy? I'm, I'm yeah. so sorry to ask this question. So when we're creating mylars, isn't that just a replication of all of the development data, including the cover sheet? Don't we ask for everything on mylar? Or is it just a condensed version. No, it's everything that we've asked for because we went down and we checked many, many um, recordings. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I thought. So if you go to the next section, right? And I don't mean to skip over this one. No, that's okay. That, we'll just, that's we'll where we back. should be getting all the meat, the potatoes, everything that we right. want that just becomes the record document, the record mylar. It just says record mylar should just be say everything that's included in subdivision site plan we want it on my law that's what it should say in my opinion right hmm. this is this is where we collect all that we want right here i feel like it's a repeat this should almost be the same as the one above well and you know you, you get to a point that we've discovered throughout this document right it circles back on itself it's got redundancies yeah uh but i guess the question is or the question i would have is Assuming that we flip these in the right order, is there anything that is on the mylar, which is what this yeah, section, not section yeah, that is exactly. not on? So that's that's, yeah. that's what I guess we need to discover. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. it should just all be a part of the record subdivision right, plan. So let's do it one by uh, one. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. Number one on there. <laughs> Date of the preparation plan. Scroll down. Because <laughs> if these are redundancies then when we flip them around, we can eliminate all this. Yeah, exactly. This text. Yeah. Ex exactly. Um, but it really, God, it's so damn small. I can't You just got to do a compare and contrast. So is number one down below data preparation of plan and revisions? Is that in the next section? All right. So let. So I, we, we, ha we do have to look at them in reverse. I, I always like to go in an orderly fashion, but. <laughs> OK. But we can we can flip back and forth. Okay, so subdivision site plan. Subdivision site plan shall contain the following information: proposed lot line and areas, class T two or T three topo survey. I thought that was number two on the one above. This is so funny. Why can't they just follow the same order that it was just? So I don't know. Ridiculous. I thought I just saw that T, you know? I'm freaking making shit up, I guess. 
So go back down there and while you're reading it, I'm looking at the record subdivision plan on a piece of paper here. Okay, I'm, all right, that's a good way to do it. And I'm checking off what's on. All right, so propose lot, lot lines and areas. Existing road, okay. And if wow. it's if it's redundant in your paper copy, Cindy, strike yeah. it through in pencil. So we know, so I can get it from you on Monday, go through and remove the redundancies. Okay. Fair? Okay. <laughs> Proposed lot lines and areas. Class T2 or T3 topo survey, two foot contours in the area of development. Okay. Inland wetlands and water courses. I think yeah. that is, that's redundant, right? That's definitely redundant, yes. Yep. Areas within 100 year flood hazard areas. That's, so that's redundant. Okay. For each proposed lot, the proposed septic leach field system, et cetera. Okay. Location of perk test holes. A proposed lots and lot nevers. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Easements, yeah, that's, that's there. Proposed open space. Names Land of trust preserves. So that's the same thing as open space. Well, it's it's a it's a specific kind of open space. Right, right. So open space captures it all. Right. Names of new streets. Um, let me go back up. I don't you see that on here. You know, there's only 12, 12 here and there's 18 that you're scrolling through. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is what we already went through in the first pass. Okay. And we sent this to Janet and said, Janet, you write these plans all the time. What belongs on which sheet? So this is what she came back with. Okay. So some of this stuff is clearly redundant to right. what is up here. Inland wetlands and water courses. If right. it's on the, that's clearly redundant. 100 year flood hazard areas. Okay, that we can see yep, now. That's, that's redundant. redundant. Name width and locations of existing and proposed streets. That seems at least partly redundant. Yeah. Okay. Existing and proposed property line street. Yes, it is redundant. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah. But then these other things seem not to be as redundant. Adjacent right. subdivisions, proposed lots and lot numbers, that might be redundant. Um, yeah, whatever is not redundant, just take those ones, put it down below, and then. Right. Switch. Yeah. Be okay. Done. All right. Let me just go back up a little bit more just to look at Marla's comments and see if there's anything that actually requires discussion, like Ugh. conceptual discussion. I don't think there is. I think these are mostly tightening of language. But let's take a look at them just to be sure, because sometimes I've found myself corrected. Map should contain the name of the qualified soil scientist who delineated the wetlands. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. OK. And I already have a note here, edit as requested. Recommend deleting the words prepared by the 100 year flood hazard as they don't make sense here. Yes, and that was a carryover of existing badly constructed language. So we'll fix that. Okay. Okay. Marla, what do we got here? Why were these requirements moved? Oh, she's referring to items J through M in the existing subdivision regulations. And the logic applied was that it was redundant to information included in the subdivision site plan. So that was a redundancy we already caught. Okay. Uh, this was a comment actually that Marla carried over from me. And I, I have yet to really <laughs> find yeah, I... the, the proper answer here. Why are we sometimes 200 feet, sometimes 500 feet? Right, because I when you know we when we we're going back to when um, a while ago about the five hundred feet of notification, um, I think it was the five hundred feet was just for 
municipality, uh, adjoining um, municipalities. Okay, and that is what this says here, 500 feet of the proposed subdivision, any municipal or district uh, yeah. boundary line. Right. Or channel and, okay. So in this yeah. case, we think the 500 feet is appropriate. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna note here. Okay. Uh, oh, and there you are. Land trust preserves open spaces, parks, and playgrounds. Yeah, and that is also a redundancy because down here it says open space, which would be all, all types of open space. The question is, should this yeah include examples as per above? I think I have to beat my cat. She's trying to get underneath my laptop. Uh, shown under letter C above. Okay. And then I have no other comments from Marla or otherwise on the subdivision site plan, which as Brian points out, this is the meat of it. Right. Now, looking at this quickly, does anybody think anything is missing here? I'm inclined to say probably not because we've been through this with one pass. An engineer who works with these all the time has looked at it and essentially provided this structure, like this is what's supposed to go on this on each page. Um, but you guys actually look at the plans with this information yeah. more than I do. I tend to look at it from bird's eye view, just you know, what is the, what is the, the purpose and the use? So you guys tell me. Do we uh, allow ourselves to add items later? If we, if there's like some special circumstance that we're not thinking about right now? For the final plan? You can set conditions with your approval. Yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's right, fine, mentioned fine. in there. Yeah, so conditions are allowed. Okay, very good, yep. Got yep. it. Is that further um, down? Go go back up to the inland wetlands um, for a minute, please, if you don't mind. I do not mind. Yep. Inland and wetlands and water courses. Shouldn't I'm surprised she didn't say that you should have um, the upland reviewed, um, dealing um, shown on the uh, plans. Have to ask her about I think that. she might have made that comment to me verbally at some point. Okay. Like, like possibly even yesterday when I was in her office talking about something. Okay. But that's a good catch, Cindy, because yeah, verb, you know, stuff that people say verbally to me in the office. Good luck having me remember it. That's why we do this, right? Right, right. Yeah, I, I you know, when when I when, when I do the final review of all this, I think I'm going to be much more conscious of it than I was on the, um, yeah, I'm going to be very conscious of it because, because of past experience and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Does anything else look like it's missing to anyone here? Let me just see my notes here if I made notes. Um, cover sheet, hold on a minute. Record subdivision, where's the, where's the paper, sorry. It's okay. Okay. No, we, we went from, from one to 18, right? Um, um, I don't know no. that we actually got all the way down to 18, oh, but okay. they're, they're up on the screen. Yeah, no. Um, do we have anywhere here where it says monuments? Um, That's a good question. Hmm. 
me see if it goes down any further. Not there. I thought there was somewhere in. Yeah, um, this is what I'm scrolling back up to look for. I did not see it in this pass through. There is a little section on monuments in the prior, right, okay. in the prior design standards, but oh, there so, we are. Uh, Location and dimensions of existing and proposed easements and existing and proposed okay, monuments. Right. So that's on the mylar. Okay, so then that should be transferred down to here too, to the site plan. Okay. Well, this is weird. Um, okay. I mean, the more we're, we're talking about this, the more it seems to me that virtually all of this stuff really does belong under what is currently letter D. Right. I, I just want to know what the extra information is that would be on the mylar that wouldn't be on the, the, the plan. There, there isn't because we're recording the mylar has to match what was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So really, the only thing that is relevant to the mylar is this opening sentence or two sentences the record subdivision map shall include all the information following information but really it should be all of the information from the subdivision site approved, plan approved subdivision site plan from the uh, the approved subdivision site plan as described in letter what is going to be i'm just going to put it in parentheses d. well it's d now but it's going to be c because we're going to move oh. it above oh look at that it made a cut right. there we go uh as described in letter c in an illegible manner and then the rest of this is all redundant right there's nothing here in numbers one through 11 that isn't addressed currently in letter D. Is um, name of streets. Okay, so lot numbers and everything, is that on there? I think so. It's on there, it's on, on this one here, but is it on the that's site plan itself? That's what I'm scr scrolling down for. And if it's not, it's just a matter of moving it. So right. all So all of these things, if they don't already occur in what is currently letter D should be essentially pasted back together so that letter D, which gets promoted to letter C has every single detail that belongs on the plan. And then all you have to say about the, the record subdivision plan, which is the mylar, is right. that it is the, the, the physical conditions of its production, which are <laughs> The record subdivision, oh, good, okay, good. We accomplished something. We removed a lot of extra nonsense. Okay. Yeah, good. you actually do. <laughs> oh, how exhausting. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So I, I hear what you're saying on that. Now, what is the relationship of this letter E to the rest of it? Because we've described in the, in the opening section of that, it describes three required documents, a cover sheet, uh, a subdivision plan, and a record subdivision plan or map, which is the mylar. Right. And now here we have letter E, which is construction plans for subdivisions with street improvements or shared driveways. What is the relationship between this and those maps? Brian, well, Constru construction guy. Well, I mean. Number one is different. Um, I'm trying to wrap my head around this here. Oh I, so I'm, I'm assuming from this that this does not get recorded with the mylar. But maybe it does. Yeah, it does because number two, number two is referenced in um, subdivision site plans. We've got number three covered. I'm still on what this is for. It says construction plans for subdivisions with street improvements or a shared driveway. 
I would not be I, If you ask me about shared driveways, I'm going to tell you just to delete the whole damn thing. But <laughs> we're not talking about that right now. I know. I know. <laughs> I agree with you, Brian. I agree with you. <laughs> Brian, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. I was just, I was just making a joke. Uh, yeah, he, he was uh, trying to pick a knife fight with me. Yeah, um, <laughs> but this is, I'm trying to wrap my head around what's what's the difference between this section and the one that we just did for like the meat and potatoes of the sub. Okay, right? so so what I'm thinking, and that's why it, was, it would be good to have a subdivision plan in our hands. I'm thinking. Is, is there a separate sheet on construction plans for subdivision with street improvements of shared driveways? I'm thinking of Laval, again, let's go to the Lavallees. I'm thinking of Lavallees. His streets and driveway, I don't know if he has shared driveways, he has a cultist back. They're on the wreck the the subdivision plans the development plans i don't think he has a separate sheet yeah. well he, they might though yeah there's some, some plans that I feel do. like this is again a compare and contrast to the other one and take whatever is shown here that's new and put it in the other one because why would we have a different subdivision plan for street improvements or shared driveways or Be private ways you because you could have a subdivision that's off a major road and you don't need to put a shared driveway or um you, you could have you could have a lot with let's see what's yeah you know, six you could have 600 feet of land on an approved road and all you need to do is driveways but if you have a 10 lot subdivision and you need to do a road yeah then you have to specify Do some kind of pavement improvement right 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 that's why i'm thinking that's this that that is here and it might be a good thing but it seems to me that it's actually a and i just made the note to myself here it seems to me that this is actually a subset a subsection right. of the subdivision map so this might be an outline and organizational piece okay Right, right. As opposed to implying that this is a separate document, because the way this is currently laid out, each of these letters, you know, B, C, D, is a different page in the map or type of map. Right. Whereas this is just a subset of information. It seems to me, and and again, Brian, Mr. Construction. Um, does that seem consistent with with how you would read this? Yeah, it, it would be consistent um, to be a subset of the previous section. Uh, I'm just going to say I, I find it uh, disturbing. I use the word disturbing that if I made my driveway a shared driveway that I could put a subdivision in it. I just do not like that at all. It's a, uh, it, it, it is a separate topic. Yeah. I, I, it, but since we've touched on it, I will tell you that Janet and I did some arts and crafts therapy on Friday. She brought in a whole bunch of big parcel maps and we mapped out some scenarios to try to fix some of the unintended consequences in some of the previously drafted language. And I think we've got there. So, um, but that's another thing where, you know, maybe you and I be, should sit down and look at some of these um, because there are certain circumstances where there, that the shared drive makes absolutely more sense uh, in the amount of pavement, in the layout, uh, absolutely makes more sense. But we all agreed that there were some problems in the way it was earlier described that needed to be rectified. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we got there, but we can, we can do some arts and crafts therapy too. Oh, maybe tomorrow when you come with the mouse. Oh, Ray, I see your hand up. I just want to say shared driveways didn't work when we had them before. I don't see why you think they're going to work now. Exactly. They're not. Well, they'll never, I, they'll I, I never work. If You're it's, pushing for something that already was an ordinance for, it did not work in this town. 
I don't understand why you're pushing for it. It's an agenda that you want that the people in this town do not want. Well, I mean, I, I don't I don't mind revisiting the arguments for it. And ultimately, you guys are going to be the deciders, right? Uh, and just, all I do is suggest yeah, no, that I just, the I reasons that... for the reasons for are the reduction of pavement, right? The, the environmental benefit. And when you're talking about new subdivision, it's the buyers walking into the situation. They see it. If it's something they want and agree to, they buy it. If they do, it's not like it's retrofitting into existing properties that's not what's being proposed so no, and but it, it seems to be being pushed and i agree it shouldn't even be there well just well, it, like just i said ultimately here, that's just... for you guys to to discuss in together the whole commission and decide but there are pros and there are cons and the pros are based on other priorities that have been stated by the community which is that they want to have a more environmental profile, right? They want to not fragment the green space. And where's that coming from, Tira? Who's saying that? Well, people in this room right here have said they want to not fragment open space. When you have added pavement, you are fragmenting green space. Yeah, and there I've heard are ways to get away, that. to get to it. I've heard other commissioners say that. In, in, in your defense, Tira, I, I believe this section E here is from our previous regulation. So you're just trying to make sure that we're covering all the bases. All right, we're back up for a minute here. Right, right. What? In the context of this conversation, we're just looking at letter E. The shared driveways is tangential. I and, right. back. and we are going to go back to it at some point. That's fine. Okay. While you guys are talking about shared driveways. Um, yeah, you I wanted to looking, go up. I was looking. Um, and the uh, record, uh, excuse me, in the development site plan, there's only one, I believe, number 10 that addresses new streets, names of new streets, which shall not duplicate the names of any previous street names in the town. Yeah. That's the only time it makes reference to street improvements or street shared driveways. I consider street improvements a new street. So, I believe that that's why construction plans for subdivision with street improvements or shared dri driveways is a separate section. Because it section. solely okay. concentrates on new streets. Okay. I can, I can roll with that. So, but, I, okay. but I still think the way this is constructed in the outline makes it confusing. It makes it look like this is a whole different sheet, but it wouldn't be a whole different sheet, would it? Or would I, it? I think sometimes it is. I, you know, okay. we're, we're going to hold that off as a question because I can remember seeing sheets on plans that have just just the drive, just the new street on it. Yeah, just make a note so, about there that yep. either this could become a subsection and we can evaluate that later or it becomes a independent section, but we just got to add it to the three above. There should be a fourth there, All right? Mm -hmm. It still would be under the requirement of the site plan development, the site plan. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, Tira, for future discussion, shared driveways should be in definitions. I believe they are. If they're not, then yes, I agree with you. Yeah, I think it is in the definitions. Let me just look it up here. Yeah, and if they're not, we'll just add it. That's easy enough to do. Well, we should. I think more than two, two a two lot shared driveway makes sense. But to have a shared driveway and say four or five homes on it, you'll never get five or four people agreeing on taking care of that shared driveway. Two should be max. All right. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't be in the definitions, though. That would be in the in the specifications. Yeah. The that last would... meeting, the last meeting, we wrote three or less, Alvin. Before it was five which obviously I'm not done with that conversation, but that's what we wrote in the notes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's right, Ryan. It was yeah, we, three we, Yeah, we less. definitely have that. We definitely have that from the last session notes. Absolutely. You still uh, talking about shared driveways? I don't know why we're, we're still talking about shared driveways. And... I know, I, I just want to talk about the maps. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're talking, I'm looking at the papers that I have here. <laughs> 
I mean, I did say it was going to be a, probably a shorter meeting, and if it, if that holds true, we we certainly can go back and discuss that further. Um, but I do want to get through the section on the maps yeah. at least. Yeah, let's do what, it. What go back and and discuss shared driveways? How fun! Well, <laughs> you know, if we want, if we really want to lay out the pros and cons, you know, we can do it. It's going to happen again in full commission, right? When you guys have your yep. full discussion. Yeah, and that's where we should leave it, and that's where it should go. All right, so now here we have the as built. Yeah, I'm reading that right now. This is... And then that's that is actually the end of the map requirements. So um, then you can decide if you want to go back and discuss any of the prior content. There, there is some that might be worth going back over. By the way, um, in the last meeting, I had not yet gotten my hands on the dark skies ordinance sample language. I did get that in the meantime, and I did drop some sample text in there. So if we want to go back and look at that, we can. Um, can since we didn't get a chance to before. Can we go back to the as built, please? It's right there. Yeah, it's on uh, the screen. All right. So, so the as built um, is approved by the commission or their agent. So it should be a, a approved by the commission and signed by the chairman of the commission. So, or their authorized agent is out of here entirely, or just well. I mean, the authorized, you know, the authorized agent is either me or or you if I'm not around or and then it we present it to the commission and say it it is exactly what they presented and what you approved. And then the chairman signs so the commission approves it and for the chairman to sign it. Okay, That's what so the where the commission is approving. All right, so where am I adding the commission? the chair of the commission signs in this paragraph. So these drawings will show the as built location of all I items depicted on the plan and profile construction drawings approved by the commission or their agent. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, where did I put it here? Um, on my notes here together. And no, I just put a note. These drawings shall show the as-built location for all items. All right, let me go right back up to the top of it. I'm sorry. I'm on completion of the road and the little bill drawings together with blue and black line print assessment except on the road by the commission. Oh, okay. I see what that's saying. Profile construction. Aren't those both those sentences saying the same thing? I, I, I don't know. I've, I was listening rather than reading along. So let's yeah. let me let me read it out loud here. Upon completion of the road and storm drainage construction, an as built drawn on an as built drawn on polyester film mylar at least 0 0.003 inches thick on sheets 24 by 36, together with one blue or black line print per sheet must be submitted prior to the acceptance of the road by the commission or their authorized agent. These drawings shall show the as-built location of all items depicted on the plan and profile construction drawings approved by the commission or their agent. Well, I would just say approved by the commission. Because you don't approve, right? No, I, I no, I don't. Yeah. That makes sense, first of all. The specifications for the preparation of the as-built drawings shall be the same as for the preparation of the construction plans. So, Kira, why do we have two S's on drawings? Uh, yeah. Well, one of them was, it, it, the, the construction was changed from drawings, plural, to drawing with an S in parentheses. I, I think somebody suggested it. It didn't bother me. I went ahead and did it. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other if it, we're referring to it in the singular or the plural. So would you want to go way, way back up um, to, to the, the block and see what that block says? Mm -hmm. Who has this? 
I guess that's where I'm getting confused. Just do, 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 do. Sections longer than I thought. <laughs> okay. A signature brush. Okay, it doesn't say anything about who who tells the chairman that he has approval to sign it. So that's what we have to put in there. Oh, what? signature brush. All right. Oh, a signature block and title approved by the Thompson. In oh, that's. That was the wetland block that you said wasn't there before, right. but it is actually there. Yeah. Where does it say that the commission has to give the chairman approval to sign the. Um, I see what you're law. saying. Yes. Uh, that would be under the approval process. Right. So that's way up, probably in section. OK. In, yeah, in Article Three. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's in there, Cindy. I think. Okay. All right. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, but th this is just the physical requirements of the documentation. The process okay. is described in the application. Okay. All right. Section. I'm good. Okay. So let's go back down to those last couple of things and make sure there's nothing else you wanted to add there. Mm. Oh, the scrolling. The scrolling. You still don't have a mouse. I, we were just talking about that, Alvin. Brian is going to come to my office tomorrow with an extra mouse, and <laughs> we're going to do arts and crafts. It's going to be awesome. A mouse right here. <laughs> just make sure there's a battery in it, Brian. Oh, let me look here. I got those two. Yep, battery. I'm going to check to see if it's good, the battery, right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm glad that you're having this fun at my expense. Let, never let it be said that I don't enjoy having letting people have the light is blinking head. on the on that uh mouse it means the batteries are dead thank you so 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 tara the, um trevor was in my office today and i told him the mouse from my computer at home died um and he brought me a new mouse within 10 minutes oh well then but if so, if brian brings me a mouse then that'll give us a reason to do arts and crafts okay all right i just wanted to let you know that but <laughs> and now it's a, now it's a thing anyway Okay. <laughs> if it died, uh, if it died, Cindy, it probably needed battery. No, it was a plug-in one, oh, Alvin. I know the difference. Why? <laughs> Ray, Ray, did I hear you try to break in and say something actually possibly relevant to what we're doing? <laughs> I, was, I was just asking if Cindy was busting Brian for, for taking two months to get you that mouse. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna end with a wow. It's only been <laughs> it's only been two weeks. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. <laughs> All right. So here we are. The last two lettered items under this section. I think we're okay. Oh no, Marla has a comment <laughs> because the in the previous iteration, the presentation had a long description of what color certain things will be. An observation was made, I believe, by one of the engineers, like, why do you need to be this granular with it as long as everything is clear? So this is how we are currently presenting it. I personally think this is fine. You guys let me know if this satisfies your needs. The plans presented to the commission and the public during any public hearing shall be rendered in color. Use of specific colors is not prescribed, but various elements shall be clear and easy to differentiate during the presentation. That says it all. That's clear. Don't, yeah, don't, I think that's clear. Don't Some need of them to make it more restrictive. And, and yeah. yeah, it's clear the way it's written. Okay, I just wanted to respond to Marla's comment and I'm just gonna drop a note in here. Oops. Consensus is this is sufficiently the, the, clear. The engineers have come in with different colors at times to to emphasize something that's really important. Yeah, so, and really, do you want to hang up an application because somebody used red instead of blue in one yeah. section? If everybody no. understands it, no, yeah. no, exactly, no, exactly. But except on. Uh, St. Uh, Patty's Day, it's got to be green. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have it all in orange and green and have a little civil war. Orange and green. Good no, green. orange and blue. And we'll, yeah. have a civil, we'll have a, a world war. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right. So are, are we good with this? Yellow and blue, I mean. With this, uh, with this section? I, I feel like we are, but if anybody yeah. wants to go. Okay. So let's just go back briefly since we didn't have the information at the last meeting. I just want to go over and read to you what I dropped in for the lighting stuff. Um, again, we had some uh, comments in the chat window. Uh, very concerned about you know, dark skies and preservation, which of course, as you know, I would generally agree with. So I did um, spend some time the following day to uh, look up dark sky ordinances. Uh, there are a few around the country. There's the uh, International Dark Sky what, Association or whatever they're, they're called. Uh, TLGV sent me some stuff. Now, when I looked at all of it, although some of it was really, really good, because it was written as ordinances, it didn't have one-to-one -one relationship to subdivision regulations. So I just tried to distill it to what I thought was applicable for street lighting. So this would be Article 4, Section 2, Subsection S, Street Lighting. Number one. These standards for street lighting are intended to, oh, this should be a two in there. These standards for street lighting are intended to protect and promote the public health, safety and welfare, the quality of life, and the ability to view the night sky by establishing regulations and a process of review for exterior lighting. Two, street lighting shall be provided in any subdivision where sidewalks are required. In general, where, when required, the placement of lighting should be limited to intersections. Uh, and what I didn't add, but might suggest is modifying that by say, un unless otherwise recommended by the Director of Public Works. Three, the subdivision plan shall show location, type, height, color, temperature, lumen output, and number of all proposed fixtures. Four, lighting shall conform to the following standards. A, up lighting is prohibited. B, all area street lights and parking area lighting shall be level mounted and 85 degree full cutoff type fixtures. C, street lights shall be limited to 1,200, that th Ooh. those numbers don't even match. 200. 25. Yeah, and we don't typically spell out large numbers because for exactly this reason, because it gets confusing. That was me copy pasting, bad me for copy pasting. Street lights shall be limited to 1,125 lumens unless otherwise recommended by the Director of Public Works. D, freestanding luminaires shall be no higher than 25 feet above the stand or pole base except that streetlights located at the intersection with major roads may exceed this standard if necessary, as determined by the Director of Public Works. E, examples of acceptable versus unacceptable fixtures are included in as appendix, and that's open because I'm not sure what numbers did, uh, letter's gonna be assigned to it yet. F, street lighting required in new subdivisions shall be solar powered. If solar powered fixtures are unfeasible due to tree cover or other limiting factors, LED light fixtures may be approved by the commission. So that is it. Uh, and and I, that was included in the uh, updated rolling draft that I sent to you guys, but I didn't know if any of you had, had a chance to look at it. And since we didn't discuss it last week, uh, seems like as good a time as any to just have a preliminary discussion. Any thoughts? Looking up one thing real quick here. Yep. And again, be leaning on your experience. I know that you have dealt some with um, lighting in, in parking areas or street lighting in some of your school projects. So you, you may have more information here than I do. Yeah, I was just double checking that a 1125 lumens could be sort of late which it can be I, I, was, I couldn't remember what we did for the sidewalk project because i gave you those light fixtures before with that are leds solar lights right 
Um, yeah, this is good. I'm okay with what's written. I appreciate the uh, solar power and LED function. I think it looks good. Okay. Anybody else have any strong feelings about this? Questions, comments? I just so everyone understands what 1125 lumens is, is it's your typical like household 75 watt bulb. Just to kind of give you a perspective. A perspective. Brian, I think most purchasing today is done in lumens. Sometimes they have in small print what it means in uh, wattage. Yeah, I mean, you could put 1125 or 75 watt. But... I think Alvin's right, though. I think lumens is is how it's referred to almost exclusively now. And it... Yeah, it is. I'm just making sure that everyone on the line understands what that means, like to give you a visual effect, because I think everyone at their house has a 75 watt bulb and a light or two here or there. Yeah. Anybody I mean, else? When you think of it, even LED light fixtures, we're talking 21st century, but you go out another hundred years or less, there may be some real low voltage lighting other than LED. We're just dating ourselves here, that's all. Well, as much as I would like the subdivision regulations to be a more stable document than the zoning regulations for logical reasons, like the zoning regulations we've committed to updating every year because uses are fluid. Right. Uh, the, the subdivision and standards for the division of land, I, I think you don't want those to fluctuate terribly much in a short period of time, but, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now, whoever is in our positions is going to have to look at this because, you know, yep. Yep. best practices improve, technologies improve. So at some point, yes, this document is also going to become outdated. Uh, our task is to make it as resilient and lasting as we can so that we're not doing this every year alongside a yearly update to the zoning regulations, right? That would just be too much and too chaotic. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got any favorite? Uh, it's 820 and I have no objection to having a shorter meeting unless there's something else earlier in the document anybody wants to go and look at. Happy nope. to scroll up. Yeah, I think the, putting the color on that is a little uh, restrictive to the um, the contractors. It says height and color, the height, color, and temperature. Oh, okay. Well, we can strike. I think the color, I think the color is a little restrictive. Um, let me just highlight it because I, I want to look. I think there is actually an environmental difference between um, white light versus, you know, cool versus warm light, which I think is what that refers to. B, do you know anything about that? Oh, I, I thought that was for I thought that was for the the basis. I, I didn't realize it was for for the color of the bowl. It, no, it, no, it's yeah, it's it's the quality of the light, whether it's warm oh, versus okay. cool. And maybe that maybe uh, you know the color specify, specify yeah. it because color yeah. can be misconstrued when it's put right. in there. So cool or warm lighting is the way it should be verbalized. Yeah, because I, yeah, that didn't even occur to me, Ray. So that's a good catch. Uh, this context. I feel like there probably is an alternate term for color that is usable Relates there as well. That. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anybody, anything else? Oh, Kai's must have dropped off. She just came back in. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay, I think we can call this a wrap. Uh, let me save this and stop the screen share. I'll just see if there's any thing I missed in the comments and chat. Doesn't look like there's any comments in chat. Uh, okay, and I believe our next meeting. Yeah, go ahead. 
sorry, this is Kai's. Um, okay. um, how are you? Um, so I accidentally, as you, uh, I stupidly turned off my computer as I was trying to say something. <laughs> so I jumped back on my phone quickly. Um, and uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm jumping on the right bandwagon with this and maybe John Lanky can um, help me with this. Um, so when, uh, for talking about streetlights and municipality, mm-hmm. um, we had talked with Orla when she was working at the office yeah. uh, about doing um, uh, sourcing uh, power from the digester, uh, putting that, putting the municipality and streetlights, sourcing the electricity from our digester. Is that something that we are hmm. still looking at? I don't know. Uh, if that- I I think on the basis of the municipality um, that ends up being a discussion between the selectmen, the finance director, board of finance, maybe the building committee, that that's a retrofit, but it, it is an interesting point. And uh, let me just, I don't know if that helps this conversation at all, but I just figured I would throw that out there. No, it's, um, I don't know what the possible accommodation is, but I'm going to drop a note here. Ken Bosley was in that conversation when he was Slackman and John, I don't know if you have any input. Yeah, the input on that was, is that there was a discussion. I remember it going on between you, Eversource and Kenny, and there's, with also because uh, Eversource is going to be was buying your power, right? Uh, if I remember some of that conversation, it was going to be that they the town was will, was supposed to sign an like you have to sign an agreement. I don't know if that went through. No, that- we never. Orla could never figure out what was uh the account number or something i had the email brought up and then like stupid me i uh, decided to accidentally turn off my computer so i quickly pulled up zoom on my phone there there is no such thing as being stupid it's just things happening (laughs) um the thing is with with that guys yeah it was that uh with whatever source and everything the town was willing to buy 400 um kilowatts you know from because it'll end up going through eversource because you you can because distribution and everything and you wouldn't get so much for being the uh the um uh the maker of it okay right so uh i don't know what the i don't remember all i see in orla's email from actually a year ago uh april 1st 2021 um it looks like the contract, our current supply contract is ending. And I had to know if the credits were available for us to use now or in a year. And then we never heard from Orla if the, she the, figured out the accounts we plan to use for the credits or not. You, you, you have to really, I think uh, Sean Johnson he could probably help. He used to. He was a consultant for um, Eversource, but the, uh, I'm trying to think of the person's name in Eversource. They could probably help you if that uh, with that contract or the the account number or whatever, and it possibly could still be there for you. But you know, right now the way Eversource is going, uh, you're lucky if you got one. Yeah, I mean Brian should know more just as much about that because he's dealing with the solar right. side of everything. Yeah, but, so I think uh, I think in the context of what we're talking about here, it's it's a little bit tangential. But what yep, occurs to me I just hear. while you're talking about it um, is there is in the appendices there's that that section that we moved out of the. Um, out of the requirements into sort of the the design suggestions for energy efficiency and that kind of thing. Yep. 
there yep. may be a more logical connection to that in oh, that okay. appendix. But in terms of just the street lighting, I don't think it's a one-to-one -one relationship. But I dropped nope. that note in there for myself for, okay. to look at it tomorrow. Not a problem. I just, I was going to email and I forgot. And then I, uh, I didn't think it was important to start, you know, in the beginning of the conversation. So, no, I know, you know, I just figured I, you know, I didn't know where we were with the net metering and the municipality and streetlights and I hadn't heard anything. And I just hope yeah, was, I'm not starting anything. It, it was targeted for uh, like the town hall, the library, the like the, the library itself and the uh, uh, the, uh, the town um, highway department. Uh, yeah, Kai, Kai, that's uh, that's something that you and I should definitely talk about yeah. soon because uh, I would I you know would that that's been in the back of my mind too. Yep, yeah. not a problem. I just figured I'd you know mention it while I was thinking of it. No, that's great. Okay. Um, great. Okay, I think we've got a wrap. Uh, anybody have the calendar for next week? I think we're Thursday again next week, right? Thursday uh, next week. All right. I won't yes. be here next Thursday. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so uh, we'll plan on Thursday. I will have the updated rolling drafts, the, the messy one and the clean one. Probably not tomorrow because I've got a bunch of meetings and Fridays are short days, uh, but before the end of the day on Monday and I will create a new Zoom link for next week. And um, good work again, everybody. Thanks for taking Thanks. the time. Have Thank a green you. beer. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.